My name is Imam Jamil Abdullah Al Amin, the former H. Rap Brown. I am a devoted servant of Allah and an unwavering devotee to his cause. For more than 30 years, I have been tormented and persecuted by my enemies for reasons of race and belief. I seek truth over a lie. I seek justice over injustice. I seek righteousness over the rewards of evildoers, and I love Allah more than I love the state. Their intention is to extinguish Allah's light by blowing with their mouths, their propaganda. But Allah will complete the revelation of his light, even though the unbelievers may detest it. This is a, a verse from the Quran, uh, the 61st surah of the Quran, the 8th ayah or verse. On March 16, 2000, Fulton County Sheriff Deputy Ricky Kinjan was killed, and Sheriff Aldernon English was shot and injured in the neighborhood where I have lived, worked, and prayed. Indeed, this tragedy occurred across the street from the mosque I founded. I have been accused by the state of Georgia of having committed these crimes. Let me declare before the families of these men, before the state, and anyone who would care to know the truth that I am innocent of the 13 charges that have been brought against me. Let me also declare that I am joined at the heart with his widow and her children at the loss of a husband and father. I drink from the same bitter cup of sorrow as the siblings at the loss of a beloved brother. I am powerless to do anything to ease your pain and suffering except pray that Allah comforts you in your hour of need and grant you peace for the remainder of your days. I have been maliciously maligned, scandalized, and vilified in the press by the police establishment and before the court of world opinion, even before I was charged with any crime. They have sought to marginalize my humanity and humiliate my family. They have done their level best to reduce me to a one-dimensional monster that is a composite of a black panther with a negative connotation, a cop killer and the fictional character of the Godfather. I am entitled to every right and every consideration as every other human being, including fairness, a fair trial, and the presumption of innocence. Fulton County District Attorney Paul Howard, as a representative of the state, has asked for my death. Mr. Howard can have my death based on the power of the state, but not on the basis of justice. He can only have my death because my life belongs to Allah. And he alone in life and in death will deliver me from my tormentors and persecutors. I will pray for those who spitefully abuse me because of power, prestige, or blind ambition. For they must face the ultimate bar of justice and face the judge of judges and answer the question, by what right and, whose, and by whose permission did you ask for the death of this human being? and my devoted servant. Signed, Imam Jamil Abdullah El Amin. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praises due to Allah, the Lord of the world. I want to begin by thanking everyone who is uh, present and uh, those who are yet to come for this evening's very, very important conversation on the life and legacy of Imam Jamil Abdullah Al Amin, the former H. Rab Brown. You know, I, I mentioned earlier in an address I gave on the West End that it is impossible to talk about Imam Jamil Abdullah Al Amin without talking about H. Rab Brown. It is impossible to talk about H. Rab Brown without talking about one of the most important and most turbulent decades in American history, the 1960s. Um, I'm looking forward, I, I am looking forward with, uh, with great anticipation to this conversation that's going to take place tonight. On behalf of the African American Studies Department, New Georgia State, and Sankofa Society, we welcome you here to this wonderful get together we got. This is important. He's used a word that I like to bring up, inspirational. Let this inspire you. This, this is what you, you know, let this gear you to seek out your goals, out your, you know, knowledge, basically. Let me get that. Um, this is just one of the events we'd like to, pretend, like to show to the world and the community and the society that we live in. Political prisoners, you know, are an evident thing. There's multiple ones still in jail now. You know, we got evidence that they didn't do such things and yet they still sit in prison. We need to work on a lot more than just, you know, 
just collective, uh, just collectively getting together. We need to actually get put forward. You know, get to the side and moving the community working. I'm indeed honored to be a part of this very important conversation. To recognize, to acknowledge, to build upon a legacy of struggle that our brother H. Rap Brown, Imam Jamil Abdullah al -Amin, a legacy of principled struggle on behalf of oppressed people, mm -hmm. a legacy of principled struggle on behalf of struggling people of African descent in particular. And when we come together this evening, we have to first remind ourselves of a comment. Uh, actually, it was a letter that Imam Jamil wrote me about two years ago. And it's just something, and he wasn't the only person to say it, but in the context of his very eloquent letter, he had something that stays with me all the time, and that is that struggle is the price that we pay for our soul. Mm -hmm. That struggle is the price that we pay for our soul. And the persons that we're going to have this conversation with this evening are exemplars of this this saying, that they have paid the price. They are paying the price for their soul through their decades of continuous struggle. I was excited when I got involved in the civil rights movement in the 60s. And over the decades since then, I've seen different folk uh, who were involved in that movement and aspects of that movement who have sort of been relegated to the status of a deity or something similar, and I find it kind of disturbing. However, it is somewhat understandable when people who speak about those people place them on a pedestal. Jamil would not allow you to put him on a pedestal. He was a human being, he was a fighter, he was a community person, he was a loving person and a compassionate person, and one of the things a lot of people have forgotten how to be, he was a friend. He was a community conscious person uh, in the city of Atlanta, where he resided in his last number of years, he was very conscious, not just about the community uh, uh, of Muslims, which he had become when he changed from H. Rap Brown to Jamil El Amin, but he stayed friends with people he was friends with before. And he tried to make sure that in that community, the senior ladies could walk the streets safely, it doesn't matter whether they were Muslim or not. He was concerned about the community as a whole. He even made sure to take them sometimes shopping when they didn't have a way to get there, make sure they got back. He was a friend. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, there are more people here than what I thought would be here. So I am really, really um, pleased um, with your coming. Um, some of you have come from some distances. And I just want to mention the young ones who are here. Um, we have a group from Whitehall, Alabama, and I mention the young ones because they write the EMAM on a consistent basis. And he writes them back. And um, they are just wonderful, and they just inspire him. Um, and that way he knows that there are so many people who still care, and then you have to give credit to their parents who consistently raise the imam in their household, his name and his work, and it's as though um, he's not even gone. Um, Imam Jamil, um, and I think I've shared this with um, some of you, uh, even though he is being held in Colorado, in the Supermax prison in Florence, Colorado, and he's being held there, and I think all of you know, without any federal charge, sentence, or conviction. And he was moved out of the state prison um, and taken to Colorado without notifying 
his attorneys or family members. And the reason for moving him uh, stemmed from what they're saying, stemmed really from the fact that inmates in the Georgia prison system, Muslim inmates, wanted him to be the imam over all of the Georgia state uh, Muslim inmates. When you think of a fugitive or someone on the 10 most wanted, um, uh, the FBI 10 most wanted list, you don't think of someone who made a speech. And as a result of making a speech in Cambridge in 1968, uh, right after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, the Congress put through what is called the Rap Brown Amendment. And the Rap Brown Amendment, which was um, enacted in August 1968, made it a federal crime to cross state lines with the intent of inciting a riot. Now, you may, and that's making a speech. You know, we have a lot of imams who cross state lines to make speeches. And if your listeners react, then it becomes a crime against you. As a result of that H. Rap Brown amendment, more than 80 charges and convictions and sentences and cases came about. Uh, Imam Jamil's, uh, when we look at his cases, we have to go back to when he was known as H. Rap Brown. And I maintain that this government has not forgiven him for what he did back then. And what did he do? He was trying to raise the consciousness of people of color. Um, when people were being bought off, we called it bought off, um, he was not. He's one of the few leaders that come out of the 1960s, come out of that movement, who didn't sell us out, who didn't compromise. COINTELPRO was established because there was this Cold War, war going on. And after a period of time when the Civil rights, began, civil rights movement began to get momentum, and then there was a transition to what we call black power. That became the primary target of this thing called COINTELPRO. And they were concerned of a development of a leadership that could unite all of these groups. But there were a couple of young men that they were really concerned about. But one was H. Rap Brown. Once you're targeted, they try to find anything they can to get rid of you. The term they used in the COINTELPRO document was to neutralize you. If you listen to his speeches during that time, he always talked about linking the situation of black folks in this country with people worldwide. He's seen as a threat because it's mentioned by Brother, Brother Salakhan because of his history, but at this particular time in history, uh, some people think it's a crime to be a Muslim. And it's particularly a crime to be a Muslim that's uncompromising. This is why he's incarcerated. We have to be more vigilant in informing people in our communities, our friends, our families, the people we worship with, about this case and other cases that are used to not only incarcerate individuals, but to make sure that none of us really have true freedom. So that's why this is an important forum. I want to thank uh, the Truth and Justice Foundation for sponsoring it and also the Sankofa Society for helping to bring us here. Thank you.